Hi, I'm Elizabeth John, and I'm going to be showing you how to properly bandage a wound on the forearm with a roller bandage using the spiral method. And this is Sarah, and she'll be our demonstration for tonight. So, hi, I'm first aid certified. <laughs> Can you show me your wound, please? Okay, so first you're going to start with, I'm going to wash my hands with soap and water because I want to get all of the germs and make sure my hands are clean first. And then I'm going to wipe them off. And then I'm going to apply gloves because gloves is going to protect you um, from any contaminations that may be in the wound, but also protect the patient um, from me putting contaminants into their wound as well. So it's protecting both of us. So once you properly apply your gloves, you're going to inspect the wound and see if there's any um, broken vessels or like... Um, there's cartilage and stuff like that. So then you're going to, since it's bleeding, but it's not major, it's just a minor cut. If it was a major cut, then you'd have to call 911 while you treat it. But since this is minor, I don't think we'd have to rush to the hospital or anything. And so since it's, ble it's bleeding and stuff like that, you're going to have to use a gauze pad. And um, it's like this. So there's a small one, but also there's bigger ones as well, depending on how big the wound is. And so since the it's small, you're gonna apply it to the arm and you're gonna hold it and put pressure on there. And if there was an object in the wound or if there was other stuff in it, then you'd have to apply pressure, not on the wound, but just close to it. But since there's nothing in it, you can apply it directly and you're just gonna put pressure on it, but not like too much pressure. And you're just gonna hold it there with your gloves. Um, and if it continues to, bleed and it doesn't stop then you can up get another gauze and apply it on top of this one but you don't want to remove the the first gauze because if a scab has already started to form you don't want to remove it and rip it off and then it'll cause more bleeding so that won't help the situation so if it continues to bleed just add another one until it starts to slow down a little bit and then once you start to slow down then you're going to get a wrap and this is going to help you this is your bandage and so there's many different methods you can use, but I'm gonna do the spiral method. And so you're basically wanting to use this just to keep the gauze in place. And so it can maintain the pressure instead of you having to just hold the pressure, hold it down the entire time. And also it'll just help um, the arm. And so what you're gonna do with the spiral method is you're going to place the bandage at the bottom of her wrist. And if it was a leg, it'd be the bottom of the leg. And you're going to start the um, most narrow part and you're just going to wrap it and go up the arm. And you want to make sure you cover up the gauze pad because that's the whole purpose of it. And so you're just going to wrap it while holding the gauze and you're going to do um, figure eights while wrapping it. But you want to make sure that it overlaps 50% um, just to make sure it's covered all the way. So you're going to do figure eights while wrapping the arm and covering the gauze pad. And so you just continue to do that until it's secure and make sure like it's not gonna fall off. And you wanna make sure it's not too tight as well because if it's too tight, then it can cut off her circulation and that won't be beneficial either. And so you wanna make sure it's just right. She can still move her arm and stuff like that. Um, and so as you can see, and then once you've done, you rip it off and just tape it. So as you can see, it's covered the band, the gauze pad and now it's bandaged up. Um, and can you still move your arm and stuff to, so it's not too tight, so it's not cutting off her circulation, so she can still do her everyday activities while having this covered. Um, and so then once you do that, she's all set, and if it gets worse, then you can go call 911 if needed, but since this was very minor and nothing severe, then you can just keep it like this. And so then once you're finished, you don't want to do, you want to be careful with your glove, contaminated gloves, and so the proper way to remove it is you're going to get the go at the bottom and grip the bottom of the glove and pull away from you and pull it inside like that then you're going to get the glove and shrivel it up in your hand and then you're going to get your fingers and go the inside of it and do that and do that so then you're, what you're touching is the inside of the glove so this part's not contaminated and then you're going to throw it away in a waste container so that no one else touches it or it gets anywhere else. Um, and then that's it. So then your patient's okay and everything's clean and stuff like that. Thank you for watching.